Chelsea Football Club, what happened? They used to be ruddy good, winning all the time. Stamford Bridge was a fortress, not a playground for the opposition, and Chelsea were feared opposition to anyone, anyone in world football. But now, now Chelsea are a fragmented, toothless entity that doesn't seem to have a real designated style, ethos, philosophy, or just approach. I've been thinking about this, I've been reflecting a little bit more philosophically about what the problem is with Chelsea, and that's kind of where we are now, right? Like, you know, transition, FC, new owners, new managers, fallout from essentially a whole new squad. So where are we? Where are we going? Whose fault is it? Where do we lie blame? Well, hopefully I'm going to decide to dissect that today. I'm feeling a little bit less emotional. I was super annoyed, understandably miffed, pissed off with what happened against Brentford. Brentford free wins are fr uh, free wins are free at Stamford Bridge, which is horrendous, really. And Chelsea have got um one win at Stamford Bridge for nine months in the league, which is just peculiar. It's like a fever dream, bro. Look, of course, we need to be fair. That is across a long period of different managers and different players. Chelsea don't score goals. Obviously, the post-match media, you know, put to Maurizio Pochettino, the Chelsea manager. What's happening? Why don't you score goals? You've bought players, but you don't score goals. And of course, he reposted with uh, Christopher and Kunku's yet to come back in the side, Brewer. But yeah, that's true. But is it? In today's video, I'm going to talk about the two main things that I reckon's wrong with Chelsea. And you know what? I'm going to dodge the obvious. Oh, we need a goal scorer. Chelsea needs goals. Chelsea need to buy a striker. Yes, that does seem like the case. I don't think that's the only problem. I don't actually think that's the main problem. I'm going to get into what I think the main problem is. But um, it's an obvious issue, right? Like, in all these games where we've lost, if you score a goal, then Chelsea's other flaws, like lack of character, don't become such a prevalent problem in a game because they feel a little bit more, you know, safe. Pochettino spoke himself about, you know... Um, Nico Jackson feeling the pressure from the fans this game or he got some grief from a fan and it got inside his head and he didn't focus mm, okay yeah and yes yes Christopher Nkunku is an elite composed finisher one of the more senior players in the Chelsea squad his return should be a welcome one but that's not the two main things I want to talk about today ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me if you want to support the content you're welcome to subscribe and hit the bell notifications icon if you do subscribe otherwise Drop a like and comment as you go um, while I speak about what I want to talk about in the video. Right. First of all, the first thing I wanted to speak about in, in this video is continuity. What has, ladies and gentlemen, what has successful teams got in common? It's going to move this over here. And by the way, before I'm going to preface this with, I praised Pochettino for changing his tactical approach against Arsenal with a 4-4-2 and with the front two being Cole Palmer and, Co um, uh, Cole Palmer and Con Conor Gallagher, which is a really unconventional approach, but it proved to be tactically a bit of a masterclass with ultimately his team letting him down. So yes, every now and again, if you are in a position where you feel like you need to do so against a really strong opposition, fine. But that's a very unique scenario. In every other game, every other freaking game, this is my call to action. Look at the most successful teams. They know exactly what they're doing. And that's because they keep the same formation, the same patterns of play. Look at your Man City with the type of 4-3-3 free, free they play. Look at your Liverpools with the type... Yes, Liverpool have fall off every now and again, but that... Holistically, they've been successful under Jurgen Klopp because they play know exactly what they do. You play in a Jurgen Klopp system, you play a 4 3 3, you know there's an overly, there's more of a functionality in the midfield free, and you get your offense from the front free and the wing and the fullbacks. It's the same. Everyone knows mechanically what you're supposed to do in a Guardiola system. You could say the same for Brentford. You could say the same for any successful team. The last time Chelsea Football Club won the Premier League 
we played with what is the most profound example of this in Antonio Conte's 3-4-3 formation. Yes, it might not have been as fun and expressive for the players, but it was the most autonomic or winning way of football because when you have games like you don't know how they're going to win like a Brentford today in that winning campaign 16-17 we faced loads of those games yes we had Diego, Diego Costa that would dig out a goal and, and stuff and of course we had the, ma the majestic brilliance of Hazard but it was the system we had those players and others and finished 10th as well do you know what I mean so the reason why we won and the reason why it's so important is because when you have these days when the crowd is getting into you and you haven't scored a goal at a certain point and emotionally you feel unsettled and you've got the system. It's like the unholy guide, the unholy, the holy guide book. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit unholy because it was Antonio Conte and it drove them mad. But, you know, I always say like, you go pass, pass, pass. And no matter what happens, Victor Moses right wing back will be in about 400 acres of space to receive the ball and do like, you know, play 4-7-B. When you're emotionally getting, and the players are soft, we don't have big characters anymore. And look, that's largely because they're young, they will hopefully develop into titans of old, of Chelsea old. But, you know, touch wood, ladies and gentlemen. But when they are freaking out, they need that reflex of just relying systemically on, you know, muscle memory of this thing while they're playing. Look, today... We played a 4-2-3-1 as opposed to the 4-3-3 that was working. Probably because Enzo wasn't available and it gave Cole Palmer the keys against a team we were going to play, you know, no playing. We knew was going to play a low block. But ultimately it failed us. Look, go watch my complete breakdown of Chelsea nil, Brentford 2 because I talk about the failed experiment on the right-hand side and I go into detail a bit more. But I feel like Pochettino, yes, you're a good manager, bro. Just stick with a formation. Just go 4-3-3. And, and then we'll be safer on transition. I feel like players, when they move formations, right? Because this Brentford game is a perfect example, man. I'll tell you why. Because the, we've got good players. We've got good players. They get a tactical idea of how we're setting up for this game. No Europe midweek. Chelsea aren't in Europe. We've got a whole week to plan. All right, we're going to play a 4-2-3-1, boys, against what's probably going to be a low block and a back five. It was a low block and a back five. So we're going to play a 4-2-3-1. Enzo can't play. We're going to have all these attackers. Bada bing, bada boom, and we're going to express ourselves. You're going to go into that space. It's all going to be cool. Opening 40 minutes, great. Look at all these patterns of play, but no goal, which will lead me on to the second reason in just a moment. And you think, all right. <laughs> then they panic, and they're playing a new formation. And I think we don't have, we have that, we've got this sort of psychological frailty that when you don't have that Antonio Conte autonomic muscle memory system to, you know, rely on, to lean back on when you're essentially failing you're left with a bunch of very talented players that for 40 minutes were demonstrating their slick interchangeable play in the final third pinning back the opposition but when you don't have that guy to put the ball in the net when you don't have that bit of luck when you have your own mental frailty then what have you got left after that nothing but panic fear and ultimately disappointment <laughs> <laughs> it's like what I offer the ladies in the bedroom. <laughs> That's awful. Sorry, you gotta laugh, otherwise, absolutely, you'll cry. So, yes, continuity systemically. Look at any successful team around the world. They know exactly the formation they play, they never change. They never change. Of course, the 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 time the la you know, the time of the Tin Command is over continuity is is the time you know high press 433 stick with that if you got a player out bring another player in keep Cole Palmer yes Cole Palmer is amazing and the number 10 he demonstrates greatness but you're still relying on 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 like a an unquantifiable confidence in players that's seemingly not prevalent in Chelsea at the moment so I wanted to talk about that let's talk about the next part so this is something that is a teething issue that we were going to, you know, uh, probably encounter with all this transition in squad and young age. It's character. Now, you look at today, the senior player was Raheem Sterling. Sterling's a good player. He is 
but he's a sort of system player that plays, he's not, I've said it in my complete breakdown, I've said it previous times, he's not like that guy that's going to take a game, he's not going to go main character mode, he's not going to go hero ball, which sometimes you need, and he's not qualified to go hero ball, he's not Eden Hazard, <clears throat> I know hero ball's like a, you know, a derogatory term anyway, like that when someone like takes it on themselves rather than playing for the team. Sterling's good, but you can't rely on him when things are going bad. He's just not that guy. He's never been that guy. If you're a good team, he will be a good player in a good team. And he's a good guy and a senior pro and, you know, some, he's a good guy for the youngsters around training. But he's not that. So when you you might have set up well, you might have a good plan. But, you know, if you know when when you don't have my like first part of the video like a real constant autonomic system to lay back on where it takes the pressure something i just forgot to say with conte's chelsea it took the pressure out of the players hands that's why we won the league look moses i say moses but so much play play went through him for a relatively average player but he became like a world-class wingback for a season when you get the ball you've got two options nothing else nothing else do one of the, pick one of those options and the pressure's off because the pressure's off them, because the gaff has so militantly and meticulously told them to do one of those two things, and it works, to be fair, so the pressure's off. But when you don't have that, you need the character, and we don't have the character, we got kids and Sterling who's like, <laughs> kind of like, um, <laughs> he's a bit of a beta, isn't he? And I don't mean that derogatory, like, he's just not the guy, and I don't, I don't want to be a team that needs to rely on the guy. Because look at, you know, you know, I was going to say Man City, but they do have a freaking Erling Haaland up front. But Man City rely on this system. They're like a really good version of what Chelsea want to be, right? Like autonomic, just play the ball, da 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 da, -da. Rubik's Cube oh, never fails if you do this move. Da 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 da, -da. goal. Always, always works. We can't do that right now. We're so far off that. So we need a little bit of aura, you know? We need a little bit of the Diego Costas, the Eden Hazards, the freaking Pedros. Like, you know, I'm on my knees for, for a player of Pedro's level right now. Just these guys that are senior pro that believe in themselves, a little bit of quality. That like, pfft, you know, you're all struggling, mate. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to smash this. And, you know, once we get that first goal, everything will be fine. So it's not so much that I think Chelsea just need a finisher, need a striker. They just need some seniority, some character in the front end of the pitch. You've got it at the back with Thiago Silva. Look, we conceded two goals today. One was quite soft. And one, again, the second one when Sanchez went up. Feel free to watch my complete breakdown for the detail on that game. I just think it's character. I just think it's soft. When everyone's panicking and everyone's freaking out because they know they've played really well for 40 years. Look, I, I, I posted on my social media a, a story that I found was quite funny. If you want to follow me on Instagram, which I'm very active daily, at Football Yannick, feel free to go follow me. I posted this recurring theme for Chelsea every game. It's like minute one to minute 40. Oh my God, look at us. We're well good. Look at how we're playing football. Wow, Chelsea are good. Look at freaking... Hey guys, have you seen Chelsea? Have you seen Chelsea under Pochettino? Look at what they're doing. Oh my God, they're good. And then like minute 40 to minute 65 is... Mm, we haven't scored yet what if we don't score like we are pretty good aren't we but what if we don't score you know minute 40 to 65 65 to like you know 85 is oh my no it's like 80 it's like oh my god they've scored what do we do maybe we're not good it's going to be even harder to break them down now the next few minutes are oh we're losing what am i going to have for dinner tonight and then finally it's oh look david washington's on that's pretty funny yolo do you know what i mean so like and then by then it's just an absolute joke it's the same theme over and over and over again. Obviously, you're not going to have David Washington making his debut every game. But it's that kind of thing of like the same themes. It's like chapters like, oh, we look really good. Oh, they're worried. Oh, they're pranging. They've got no answers. Of course, we're losing. It's part of the script. Let's let them win. And for me, that at that point is character. We The first 40, 40 minutes is that kind of autonomic. Oh, we want to be that systemic team. But then... If you can't do that, if you can't be Antonio Conte, 16-17 Chelsea, if you can't be like current iteration of Manchester City, then at least you need those characters to get you that one goal. So then the pressure's relieved and maybe Nico scores, maybe Palmer scores, and they feel less pressure on them to do it. Do you know what I mean? Two reasons. And that's not me just saying, oh, they need a goal scorer. You could argue the second one's a little bit like that. 
But I've been thinking about Chelsea holistically as a team, as a club, and that's how I feel about them right now. So I put it out to you guys. How do you feel? Do you agree with me? Um, this was much of a therapy session for me. Hopefully it was a little bit for you. Um, I mean, surely we get better. We just have to get better with time. You know, with settled players, young players getting older, Pochettino being more than a few months in the job, buying the seniority I've talking about, and Pochettino learning that he does need to just keep a formation. Comment down below, let me know what you think, and stick around, hopefully I'll see you again soon. Peace.